going to do this. Recording is not working. Just going to leave like this. All right. Can we give our panelists a warm welcome? Good morning, everyone. I am really pleased to welcome you to today's panel discussion on shoplifting in Fenton, California. My name is Cheney Gomez, a biology and biomedical science major here at Vanguard, and I'd like to start off with introducing our panelists today. So first we have Leslie Villarreal, our crime expert today and criminal justice major here at Vanguard. Hi everyone, my name is Leslie Villarreal. I, like Cheney said, I'm a criminal justice major. So it was kind of interesting to see how the law plays a role in like shoplifting. And an interesting fact about me is I like watching like true crime, like murder documentaries, stuff like that. And I'm also a dancer, so. Yes, thank you so much for being here. And next we have Elisa Hernandez, our technology expert and computer science major. Hi, my name is Elisa. Like Jamie said, it's a pleasure to be here with all of y'all today to speak on the topic of theft. It's, it's an important topic that we all need to speak about, that it, there has been some increase, I believe, in theft in, throughout these 30 years. And a fun fact about me is that I love to see you. So thank you for being here. And lastly, I am pleased to introduce our societal impact expert and communications major, Kiana Moy. Hello, everyone. My name is Kiana Moya. A fun fact about me is I am from Las Vegas, so it has been super interesting to learn all about the laws on shoplifting and theft here in California. So as I kind of had previously stated, I brought in these expert panelists today to really discuss this problem of shoplifting. And in a recent study just here in our class, um, when Vanguard students were asked if they or someone that they knew had something stolen from them here in Costa Mesa, almost 80% of the students said yes. Theft is really plaguing our state and our community. And the goal of our panel to today is to inform and to educate the citizens of Costa Mesa on this issue. So I think to really start us off, could one of our panelists answer what are the current laws regarding shoplifting in California? So the California Penal Code 484A1 says that theft is stealing the personal property of another or fraudulently appropriating property or also defrauding another or causing others to falsely report wealth in order to obtain credit, money, property, labor, stuff like that. And there's there's two types of theft. So there's petty larceny and there's grand larceny. Petty larceny is when the value of the property stolen is under $950. In some states, it's a thousand. It kind of varies depending on where you are. And then grand larceny is over $950. Um, there is an exception for grand larceny, so um, if it's like a gun or like a car, it doesn't matter how much it's worth, it's still grand larceny, or also agricultural products, livestock, or aquaculture, those are also grand theft, or the um, number is lowered, so the maximum for that is 250, so it's kind of different, if that makes sense. It's really interesting that agriculture products are different. Do you have a reason why um, it's more illegal to steal a fish than it is to steal it from a grocery store? Um, well, I looked at, I couldn't find anything on California, but I looked at Oklahoma's um, statue and it said that it doesn't matter if it's dead or alive, um, it's still, you know, considered grand larceny because it's just easier, like, that type of stuff, it's more available, like to keep it out in the open. Um, like produce, equipment, and livestock, they're kept outside, so they're unguarded. So it's kind of easier to take that. So I think that's why maybe they lowered it to 250. That makes sense. Um, and what are what are the police really allowed to do? Or or do they pursue these criminals who steal um less than nine hundred and fifty dollars worth of product? I think a lot of cases go untalked about because I feel like it's just the simple answer is it's a waste of time, like money. There's just too many. There's too many cases. Like they can't go after every single one. So I think that's that's the simple answer. That's really that's really interesting. I mean, if they're not catching these people, nine hundred fifty dollars. I don't have nine hundred fifty dollars to spend. I'm a college student. Um, so that seems that seems like a lot to me. So this has to be affecting. Are small businesses. So does anyone have a 
have maybe something how it's affecting the small business owners of California? It's affecting small business owners in almost every of the worst ways possible. Mm -hmm. Many small businesses are closing. Closing. Richard C. Hollinger is a professor at the University of Florida, Florida, and his research shows findings that businesses in areas with higher rates of crimes are more likely to shut down because they can't financially compensate for the lost goods or for the money it costs to invest in high-tech security. Not only are these small businesses having to worry about paying for cameras and financially compensating for the lost goods, but they also have to pay workers more to get more workers in the store. There's also a psychological toll on business owners that cannot be overstated. Mm -hmm. A study published in the Journal of Business and Psychology found that the fear of crime significantly affects business owners' well-being and job satisfaction. Um, in addition to this, many small business owners go into the business of being a small business because they love entrepreneurship and they love the sense of community that thriving small businesses offer and constantly worrying about theft can undermine their passion for local entrepreneurship mm -hmm. that they love to foster. Um, so there's also a few other ways that they have began to work on theft, such as taking their bags at the front of the store, which just creates a more unpleasant shopping experience for all. Absolutely. I mean, small businesses, that's really just the American dream. Everybody wants to come here so that they have a chance to make it. And if you're psychologically being undermined by people who are stealing from you, that's just, I just don't think that that's what America stands for. So how is this really affecting even our community here close to us in Costa Mesa? So I was looking at the Costa Mesa Police Department statistics, and I also looked on the FBI um, website as well to kind of compare the numbers, and they were exactly the same. So um, for 2019, robbery was 104, burglary was 450, and larceny was 2,934. And there's a difference between these three. So larceny is just taking personal property and there's no people at play. There's no like people around. And then burglary is entering a building illegally or a home. And then it doesn't matter if you steal anything or not. Like if you break in, that's burglary. And then robbery is also similar to burglary. Um, but this time there's people like at play, like say like a uh, Robbery goes into a bank and then they have guns and they threaten people. That's what robbery is. So that's the main difference between those three. Um, I looked at 2020 statistics and it went down in 2020. Um, but I think that was because stores closed, a lot of stores closed. So there's probably a lot of cases that went like on, they didn't look at them. And then more recently, 2022, they went up again. So I think that's interesting to see, like how the numbers went down during COVID 2020 and how they came back up. Thank you for clarifying the differences between those. I really didn't know what the difference between robbery and burglary was, but I think kind of if you do the math on those numbers, almost 3,000 larcenies in one year, that's eight larcenies like a day. So eight people are being taken from, and that doesn't include burglary, that doesn't include robbery, every single day in our small community of Costa Mesa. So that seems like a real problem um, and like an epidemic almost. Um, and how is this how is this affecting us as consumers, as people who are following the law and not stealing? I believe um, it's affecting consumers in three ways, money, time, and safety. Safe, your safety is the most important one because you're just a normal person going to the store on a normal day. You're not, ex you're not expecting for someone to go up to you in the store and like um, pull out a gun like on people because they're stealing and that's their way of like protecting themselves supposedly to not like get uh, jumped. But also it takes your time because you now worldwide, not just in California, Walmarts are um, closing up um, certain items. They're locking them up. Like you're, you need a razor, you have to wait to be assisted. You have to wait, push a button and employees take their time when one's time is valuable and they need places to be. And money also um, with the direct um, increase in theft, it's being a direct increase in prices at stores. And not a lot of people have money to be spending um, on just little things. Razors are now $10, I believe. <clears throat> they used to be cheaper, I believe. I'm not, I'm not sure. So, and also, um, also there has been uh, an increase in local um, targets closing down because there has been an increased amount of an increased uh, percentage in debt. It's not, I believe it's more in upper 
uh, Northern California where targets are closing due to that. And Sacramento has been ranked the number seven in the worst city in the United States because it's there's a lot of theft going around in Sacramento. Wow, that is really unfortunate. Um, like you said, baby food, everything's being locked up. I went to our local Walmart and tested, and all I wanted was some foundation. And I had to wait. It was probably 7 p.m. I pressed the button. I waited 30 minutes, and no one ever came. They were just understaffed because of these rise in prices. They can't hire as many people. There's just no one to help me, and these poor workers are overworked. It's not their fault um, that people are stealing and there's really not much that they can do. So as she kind of said, there are someone is someone has to pay for all of this theft. So would any of our families like to kind of add on to who would be really paying the price for all of this theft? Yeah, at the end of the day, unfortunately, it's us. We are the ones paying for all of this theft. Our prices are raised, the quality of goods go down. There's been a huge rise in something called shrinkflation, which is the practice of reducing a product's amount of volume per unit while continuing to offer it, offer it at the same price. So for example, a soda that had 16 ounces might now be sold to you at 14 ounces for the same price. You might also see this in other goods as the quality is going down, like the quality of fabric might be going down on the shirt that you wear, but it will be kept at the same price. So unfortunately, we are the ones you end up paying a lot of the difference. I think we can definitely all all feel it. When I look at my bank account, I certainly can. Um, and we've heard, we've kind of heard tales of people stealing a lot over time. They can, Maybe they don't take $950 at once, but they'll go in and they'll steal a little bit here, a little bit there. So what's kind of the, the statute of limitations for petty, for petty larceny? So for those of you who don't know, a statute of limitations is the maximum time after an event within legal, legal proceedings may be initiated. So if a case is filed past the date of statute of limitations, it must be dismissed. Unfortunately, the statute of limitations for grand larceny and petty larceny is a really small amount of time. The statute of limitations for grand larceny, stealing over $950 worth of product, is just three years, and for petty larceny is just one year. So if you stole $950 worth of product in a year and a year later you stole another $950, you wouldn't be able to be punished for the original $950 you stole. And this may not seem like a big deal and they that they would catch you before that, but unfortunately that's not the case. The Los Angeles Police Department has reported a surge in organized theft rings with criminals exploiting these very legal loop, these very loopholes in the system. So you could steal, I mean, that's almost a thousand dollars per year. Three years of stealing, you've stolen three thousand dollars worth of merchandise. That's that's insane to me. But I'm sure I'm sure there has to be a reason for why the law is this way. I mean, I can't think of one, but does do any of our panelists do you guys have a reason why they chosen to have the law this way? Yeah, so Proposition 47 increased the dollar amount for felony of theft to, from 400 to 950. So it used to be at 400, but they brought it up. And that was simply because jails were being overcrowded. So there was too many prisoners and they can't they can't keep up with the, the prices, you know. Um, for one prisoner annually in California, it's like 81,000 per prisoner. So imagine that. So they just... Yeah, they brought it up because there was too many people in prison and they couldn't. So it's cheaper to just let the criminals just go and be on our street. <laughs> it's cheaper for them to just steal from us. An interesting logic there by our lawmakers. And so how do you how do you think that these laws, this leniency, is really affecting our society? Is our society becoming more okay with theft? Oh, absolutely. I would think that our society as a whole is becoming more numb to shoplifting in general. Um, I was researching what age group steals the most, and two-thirds, 66% of all shoplifters are under the age of 30. A whole 6% are under the age of 12. 26% of all shoplifters are between 12 and 17, and 33% are 18 to 29. So especially with our generation, the one below, above us and beneath us, are becoming increasingly numb and just more okay with shoplifting. Uh, this affects our society by we're not able to use the shops we once loved, we have to pay more to get less. Uh, a saying that I grew up with is buy it nice or buy it twice, a saying that means you have to buy a quality product if you want it to last. And unfortunately, due to the quality of things going down, 
Many people are having to buy things twice instead of just buying it um, once. Um, approximately one in 11 people in the U.S. have shoplifted in their lifetime, but only one in 49 cases lead to an arrest. So unfortunately, people are just becoming way too numb to this, and they don't seem to care about the repercussions of shoplifting. Well, it's almost understandable. I mean, if, if they don't have to pay, why should I? Um, so that I kind of have um, an opinion question for our panelists, and what do you guys think about the law? Do you think that it's fair? What are kind of the sides? What what's the argument for both sides of this of this story? I think it's important like to see both sides because some people steal because of need. So some people can't afford certain things. Like um, me and Elisa were talking about baby formula. So um two small tubs is like fifty dollars and they last like what two three weeks that's like a hundred dollars a month and in a year like twelve hundred dollars so it's expensive to live and you know like say like a mom she needs medicine for her kid right she can't afford it so she goes and steals it stuff like that i feel like it shouldn't be like acceptable but maybe the government can do something about helping with that type of stuff too because i know there's like EBT cards, right? They give you like assistance for money. Um, but that doesn't cover like hygiene products, clothing, medicines. It doesn't cover that type of stuff. So maybe that could be um we'll talk about later, like some solutions. Maybe that could be something that that could help out and bring the cases of them low. Mm -hmm. In addition to this, um unfortunately, there's not as much as we can do. Again. We don't have enough space in the prisons. And if we arrested every single person who stole under $950, police would be way more focused on shoplifting than they would be for life-threatening crimes. And I would also, I would like to add on to what had, Leslie had previously said that the, these, it's sad to see that mothers have to go to those lakes, but it's also, they go, they go to those lakes because um, before they have to go to those things, they apply mm -hmm. for um, food stamps like WIC, but in the application process, they may be denied. So they don't get food stamps. So that may also lead them to go to those things. And also um, EBT cards where they were being given out during the pandemic for, um, I believe it's from K through 12. I believe they were given about approximately $365 up to $400 only on their, um, only for food. Which I believe that's good that they're giving the money for food, but also they need their hygiene essentials like their their soap, their shampoo. So I think um um what's it sorry. Yeah, so I think um that's why parents go to those links and it's sad to see parents having to go to those links because during the pandemic, parents lost their jobs. They were let that let go because of the pandemic of um too many employees in one location, I believe. So what do you guys consider a solution to um, I guess what you would consider like essential that these people they're stealing essential items. Um, what would you what would you say would be a solution to that problem? Um, I think like I mentioned earlier, the government maybe they can um work or we can actually vote for you know people do a research about um who we vote for to make these changes so they can get assistance with other necessities other than food because obviously you need food, but there's also other things you need, like hygiene products, you need clothes, you need medicine for when you get sick, stuff like that. So I think maybe... So including your essential items like deodorant, um, baby formula as acceptable for EBT. Okay. Um, what about the side for the shop owners who are having to close down? They didn't break the law. They followed the law. They they have to jump. I mean, to be a shop owner in California, you have to jump through a lot of hoops, a lot of permits. It costs you a lot of money to have a business. What do we do about them? How do we how do we change this law so that it can be better and fair for everybody? How does one go about? Are there any propositions? Uh, there, change this law. Um, that's a good question. There was an assembly bill, um, seventeen oh eight. Um, it was that the government was offering people with prior convictions already that have committed a crime, a diversion program. Instead of sending them to prisons, they would send them to like 
a substance abuse program or a mental health program to help them. Um, I believe that's another good way to see it because like how Leslie said, there's an overflow in jails, in county jails. So they need to give, figure out a way on how to like have many prisoners in one cell. So they're doing these programs to help them out. And that's good because maybe these um, people that are committing these crimes, they're realizing what they're doing is wrong unless like they're um, abusing substances. They, they don't know what they're doing. They're in a different mental health, mental state. So I believe that's a good way to also bring to change or not start a petition because it's also, it comes to down to the person who's in city council, who's the elected official. They're allowing this, this, um, this law to be like this. So I believe starting a petition, gathering evidence because a fine or six months up to county jail is not enough for a, a person that commits these crimes because six months is not enough when you're spending more than $950. I believe that's ridiculous. They, that punishment should be more in jail. Absolutely. Um, so I believe that that's really what we have for our discussion. I really liked um, your, you mentioned that bill. So we have a solution to the overcrowding of jails. Instead of just sending them to jail, let's send them to mental health facilities, um, substance abuse facilities, so that they still do, so that they're off of our streets but they're not in our jails. So I think that's a very interesting proposition and I'm um, I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. And is there any questions from the audience that anyone would like to ask? Um, you mentioned the council living in California also has to do with uh, increase in ceilings? I would say yeah.